Are you glad to be in God's house? Are you glad to be in God's presence? Oh, praise God. For your consideration, we're going to focus on verse 12. Well, everybody stand with me again. Father God, it is in the name of Jesus that we stand to proclaim your word. It is in the name of Jesus that the power of God and this word come forth. So, Lord, I ask you to just speak to me and speak through me. Lord, I God, I pray that this word that you prepare for your people will encourage and exalt and lift up the name of Jesus, will admonish your people, Lord God. And I pray right now that the souls today will leave here being better because of the word you've given unto us today. Lord God, let this word bless, let this word comfort, let this word even admonish when admonition is needed. So, Lord, we give ourselves to you. So speak through me, Lord God. Let the words come forth from my mouth be of thine only, Lord. Take me and put me all out the way, Lord God. I humble, I give myself to you, Lord God. Let the people not see me, but let them receive you. That the words that come forth come from the throne room of heaven. For you are God Almighty. And Lord God, we just claim the blessing you have for us here today. In Jesus' name, we claim your blessings. Amen. Amen. The word of God says... And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. For your consideration today, We'll speak on the subject, how to keep going when your strength is gone. How to keep going when your strength is gone. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. I want to just thank God for this opportunity to stand before his people again. Thank God for our senior pastor, Pastor Mike, and our elders of the house, Elder Monica and Elder Sorrell, and all the deacons and deaconess, thank God for our worship leader, Deacon Franklin. I mean, yeah, Deacon Franklin. We want to thank God for him. Amen. Praise God. Getting the fire going there. Thank God for you pressing your way out to be here today. And thank the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Because, see, if he was not here, there would just be a, a gathering. But because the Spirit of God is here, this is a transformation experience for God's people in the house today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How to keep going when your strength is gone. As we look at the book of First Kings, chapter 17, we will find that this was written in 10th century B.C. This was written during a time when Ahab and Jezebel were ruling the kingdom of Israel. And not only they ruled, they were ruling in their wickedness. The word of God tells us, uh, and if you look at ver chapter 16, uh, and you read this in your own time, you will find around about verse 30, God's word says that Ahab was a wicked king. Uh, he, he did all types of wickedness. And then it goes down to verse 30, it says, Ahab did more wickedness and provoked God to anger than any other king before him. Ahab and Jezebel. And there was a time when uh, they worshipped false gods, and they did all types of evil things. And the word lets us know that Jezebel commanded that all the prophets in the land be killed. And see, it's a danger, my brother, my sister, when you are with an unconcentrated woman. See, there's a power. God has given us power, women. And we don't need to hold our heads down about that and be not deceived, be not marked, because God has given us power. We can see that from Sister Eve. God made it clear to Adam and Eve what they were to do, but when Eve was deceived, the word makes it clear that Adam was not deceived, Pastor Michael, but because of that influence that Eve had on him, he chose to disobey God in order to be with Eve. And we find in this passage of scripture that Jezebel's influence over Ahab, Pastor Michael, was greater than the Spirit of God influence. You hear that, Deacon Franklin? Jezebel's influence was greater 
over Ahab influences the purpose than the Holy Spirit. And that same thing is true today. There are Jezebels still in the land. I pray there's not a Jezebel in here. Because uh, how you can tell a Jezebel? A Jezebel is anybody. It don't have to be no woman. But most time it is a woman. A Jezebel spirit is a person who's got to control. And they'll do whatever they have to do to manipulate you to get what they want. Jezebel, how do you keep going when your strength is gone? As we look at this passage of scripture, we find that God sent a message to King Ahab. See, now Ahab was the king of Israel. That means he was one of God's chosen people. That lets you know that God's chosen people can get out of his will. No one is exempt from being under Satan's influence. And women, because we have the gift of influence, we have to pray to God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in him so that we will have an eye to understand what is it of the power that's working through us. See, that power needs to be the Holy Spirit. And see, we have to pray for the Holy Spirit to work through us because we aren't careful that power we have that's working will be influenced by Satan. And before we know it, we'll be thinking and doing things that's not pleasing to God. And when we are not pleasing to God, we will cause the head to fall. It's no debate. It's no question. The man is the head. God planted him over us. I have no problem being a submissive to my husband. I have no problem being submissive to my senior pastor because God made it clear. But I also want you to understand God will use whoever he will. See, a lot of people get caught up with, oh, you're a woman, and so you can't do this, you can't do that. God is not like, he's no respectable person. God will use whoever he will. He will use that baby. He will use Justin if God wants to use him to bless his people. The key is we must be willing to be used by God and must be willing to be submissive to God. We got to be humble to God. The word says in, in chapter 17, uh, in, in verse uh, two it is, the, he says, uh, first one, verse one, he said, Ahab and the Lord, uh, God of Israel, liveth. And he told uh, J- J- uh, Elijah to tell the king that there will be no rain and no dew upon the land for three and a half years. And this is because of their wickedness and their iniquity and their sin. And so often, says the Prenda, people would be doing wrong, and when they get in trouble, they'll blame you. You are in management. And if somebody is not doing like they should, and you have to discipline or even terminate them, they'll get mad with you for firing them. But they, you didn't fire them. They fired themselves because they were not doing right. Ahab. And Jezebel and the people, they blame Elijah for this famine in the land. Three and a half years. And, and see, God told Ahab, I'm, I'm sorry, God told Elijah to go and tell this to Ahab. And Elijah obeyed God. He told him. But you know what? He didn't tarry neither. He told him and then he took off. Because remember, Jezebel had given an order, stop playing children, stop that right now. We're going to play with the Holy Spirit, not no patty or whatever that you're playing. But God told Elijah to go and tell Ahab that there would be no rain nor no dew on the land for three and a half years. And then God also told Elijah, said, go down and hide thyself by the brook Cherubim. That's near Jordan. So God will always provide a place for you. He'll provide a place of refuge for you. So Elijah did what God told him. And look at this. This is in verse 4. God told me he was to drink from the brook. And he said, I have commanded a raven. Children, what is a raven? A bird. That's right. Thank you, Marcella. God said, I have commanded a raven to feed thee. See, God don't need us. We need him. God told his servant Elijah to go and tell Ahab 
that there will be no rain nor no dew upon the land for three and a half years because of your wickedness, because of your iniquity, because of your great sin, and because of all the folly of the people. But you go and hide, and I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to give you a brook that's going to feed you with the water you need because, you know, we need water. But I'm also going to send you a raven. The raven is going to bring you meat and bread every morning. Bring you meat and bread, Brother Joshua, every evening. So you won't be hungry. He's going to feed you, Brother Willis, with meat and bread in the morning, in the evening, and give you all the water you need to drink, Sister Perry. Drink that water. Hallelujah. That's what God said. Now remember the famine in the land. And that means there is no rain. There is no marsh coming down to the earth. So if you don't have no rain, what's going to happen? All the water going to go away, going to dry up. But I find it interesting that when the brook dried up, God sent him, I'm in verse 10 now, God sent him, I'm sorry, verse 9, told him to arise and get to Zarephath. And God says, that's in this uh, Sodom. And he said, I want you to dwell there. I'm going to have a, I have commanded. See, God commands. God commanded a raven to provide food for Elijah. God commanded a widow in a famine to provide for his servant. Now, that's a, a, a major thing right there. And make sure you understand. A widow is a woman without a husband. Once had one. She doesn't have one. He's dead. So she's a widow. And this is a widow that's going through a famine. So whenever a famine comes or anything comes, the widows are the ones that suffer first because they already use your poor and destitute. So they usually are the one that's weaker. They usually are the one who die out fast or first. But God didn't choose a palace. He didn't choose somebody that already had Resources, he chose a widow. And he didn't just choose any widow. He chose a widow that had a son who was dependent on his mother to take care of him. You know? And God says, I've chosen, uh, I've commanded a widow there to sustain thee. Look at this switch. Elijah's not going there to take care of this widow, but he's going there to be sustained by this widow. Now, they also are going through the same famine. Now, I want you to understand that Elijah was at the brook of Cherub. He told him to go to Zarephath. That's about 100 miles away from where he was. Now, remember, he's running from Jezebel. Jezebel is in the area of Zarephath. God sent him back to where he was running from. Sister Willis Sometimes God will send you right back to that thing you thought you got away from. And that's where your breakthrough, that's where your blessing is, minister God is. You got God. You got to stay what God said. He sent him right back to the same territory. And I think there's a couple applications. I think one that let us see that God can protect you no matter who is coming against you. Now, everybody was afraid of Ahab. I'm, I'm sorry, Jezebel, including her husband, Ahab. But God sent his prophet back to Zarephath, and he sent him back to be sustained by a widow who did not have anything herself. We pick up the story here in verse 10. Elijah was obedient. Elijah got up, and he went to Zarephath, like God told him. And when he got there, he came to the gate of the city. And at the gate of the city, he saw this widow woman. And she was there gathering sticks. And she was there gathering these sticks. And, and, and when he, she got there, he hollered out to her, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, this widow didn't have no problem going trying to get some water. Even though there is a famine, she was willing to share her water with this stranger because she didn't know Elijah. She just knew it was a man that had come to her city, and he asked for water, and it was her pleasure as well as her duty to give him this water. But on her way to get this water, something else happened. On her way to get this water, 
he asked her, he called out to her, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in that hand. Now, this was a stop. This was one of the one stopping in your crack, in your, in your track. She was on her way to get him this water. But for him to say, bring me a morsel of bread, that was like major. Because verse 12 says uh, to us, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. In other words, I'm swearing, I'm taking a testimony by your God that I have not a cake, but I only have a handful of meal. That's, this is like your little hand. That's all you have, brothers, Sam, Sam, uh, Sam, a handful of meal. And then she says, and a little oil in the cruise. And she doesn't stop there. She said, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress. In other words, I'm gathering sticks so I can make a fire, so I can prepare this, uh, this bread, this little cake here, make this bread, and I'm going to, me and my son, we're going to eat it and die. How do you keep going when your strength is gone? Now, this widow, she was expecting to die because she had gotten to the bottom of the barrel. She had gotten to a to the end. She was at her wit's end, but at the same time, she was still moving. The word says she was at the gate. I mean, she was not at her house. She was at the gate gathering sticks. And as she was there gathering these sticks, just let us know that your situation may be bleak. It may be bad, but don't stop. Don't succumb to death. Continue to go and gather sticks. You may have to gather love when nobody want to love you back. You may have to gather mercy when everybody want to sh not show mercy. You have to, may have to gather forgiveness when nobody want to forgive you. you. You may have to get, gather uh, that consideration when everybody else want to judge you. You got to be one of mercy. You got to be one to forgive. You got to be one to love. You got to keep moving on. When everybody else is coming against you, when the weight of the world is on your shoulder, you look like you're about to crush. You're about to fall down under the way. Just know that if you just keep on moving and you just gather those sticks of faith, those sticks of love, those sticks of, of God's mercy, you can still move on. Although you don't have no strength, but know that my God is all all powerful and when you are weak God it makes you strong when you can't go on God will be the one that makes you go on God will take you at your weakest point and he'll hold you up because we just got to surrender to God we got to humble ourselves on the mighty power of God when we can't make it when we can't go on know that that's when God can step in hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. We got to have faith. The word says that Elijah told this woman, said, fear not, go and do as thou said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me and make thee for and for thy son. Now, this was a test of faith for this woman. She, she doesn't have anything but that little handful of meal and that little oil. Oh, and here's a stranger who happened to be a man of God. But at this point, she doesn't know who she, he is. She ought to know that he's a stranger that have come and asked for water. And now he's asked her to give him his very land. You know, God will do that to you, Sister Blaine. God will have you to give your very land. You came today with some water, but somebody showed up, needed it, and you gave him that. But see, whenever we give our, our land, God just put in position to bless us with more. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, when you are going through, God will tell you to do something that will defy everything that makes sense to you. If you have you to give in your very land, and that thing that you had, you needed to yourself to depend on. That was your life sustaining sword. But he would say, give it up. And that's what he did to this woman. And out of faith, she did it. And here's the promise God gave her. God told in verse 14, he says, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, 
Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent his rain upon the earth. And because she was obedient, because she gave her very land, God never let that meal run out. He never let the oil run out. And God will do that same thing to you today. You may not have any money in your bank account, but continue to pick up the sticks of faith and you continue to pray to God. Continue to trust God. And God will supply you with everything you need for I know without a shadow of doubt my God in heaven will supply all your need hallelujah you just got to trust God God says to you and he says to me don't be fear don't fear for I am with you he said don't be dismayed for I am God he said I will give you strength hallelujah from my right hand of righteousness so whatever you're going through just know that God can do it you can be at your wits end and God will provide for you you can be at your wits end about to go down can't see how you're going to make another step the load can be so heavy the burden that you're bearing can be so great and you can't see how you can make another step but I want you to know you can go on when you fall in the arm of Jesus hallelujah just like God sent the raven to provide for Elijah God will send a raven to provide for you whatever you need God got it whatever you need God can do it just know that there is no problem that will come upon you that God cannot do I want you to realize that God is saying to you today and he said to me I am God whatever you need I can provide you just got to trust me you got to obey me you got to lean not to your own understanding what makes sense to you doesn't make sense according to my divine will so trust me I will not fail you trust me and I will make your enemy your footstool trust me I will make you the head and not the tail trust me I will give you wisdom that will defy all other people I will give you power to speak to your situation I will give you power to speak to that mountain and that mountain will be cast in the sea I will give you power to bring that thing which is dead by man can bring it back alive. I want you to understand so often man will count you out. But when you're walking by faith, God will bring it back to life. Just like here in, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 17, we find where God did another mighty thing. He had provided for the widow, and the widow had provided for her son. And the widow had also provided for Elijah, the man of God. But here in verse 17, we find where the widow's son got sick. And not only did he get sick, but he died. Oh, my God. And I can imagine how this widow felt. She survived this famine. She saw God come through. But here God has taken her son. And she probably said now, and she even said to the man, she said here in verse 17, she said uh, to him, in, in verse 18, said, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Are thou come unto me to call my sin to remember and to slay my son? So here she felt that God was punishing her. So often we'll see things happen in our lives and we'll begin to question God. Lord, you know I'm faithful. I keep your Sabbath. Lord, you know I pay my tithes and my offering. Lord, you know I try to help those that are in need. Lord, I try to do right when people do me wrong. Why is this happening to me? Why is this? Why is this? But I come in and let you know that you can go on when your strength is gone. When you lean not to your own strength and power, but you trust God. And see, here it is. This widow began to have some doubt. But as Elijah began to talk with God, Elijah began to plead with God. God restored that son that was dead. God brought him back to life. And that's what I'm saying to you. You can have something going on in your life and it looked like it's dead. But if God said it shall live, hallelujah, I'm here to tell you that God will bring it back to life. Those men will tell you that she ain't no good. Mary Ted, he ain't no good. But trust God. 
Don't trust man word because God can bring that which is dead back to life. The doctor can say that you don't have but days to live. God can say, I'm going to give you another chance like I gave Hezekiah. I'm going to add to your years. I'm going to add to your life years. I want you to understand that problem that's going on in your home, that problem that's going on in your marriage, that problem that's going on in your relationship, that problem that's going on in your finances, that problem that's going on in your body, in your health. Whatever the problem may be, it may look like you won't make it. I'm here to tell you that you can go on when you give over to God. God will give you strength to sustain. God will give you strength to go on. So I want you to understand it's not about you, but it's about God. And you got to learn, my brother and sister, I want you to understand it's important to know that God will meet you there wherever you are. When your strength is gone, God will provide for you. Hallelujah. How you keep going when your strength is gone. You have to find that place in God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Let his word, hallelujah, let his very presence strengthen you. And as that word of God begin to take root in your life, you can talk to yourself. You can tell your body, hallelujah, that God said, I shall not die, but live. Hallelujah. You can begin to prepare to live, not prepare to die. Just like that woman, she was preparing to die, but the same time. She was still moving, getting sticks. She wasn't laying down. Because if she just really believed she was going to die, why bother to even eat? If that's your level, why bother to go to the trouble of making fires and cooking it? She still had a, a willing spirit. She still had a can-do spirit. And we have to realize that we have to talk to ourselves. We have to speak to our problem. And when we speak to our problem, we have to take hold of God's promises. The word of God is all the promises are yea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the promises of God are yea. Not some of them, but every last one of God's promises are yea. Those promises are for me. Those promises are for you. So we have to walk in the thought that God has given us. We have to speak to and know that God is all powerful. We have to know that whatever we are facing, God is the solution. Whatever it is, God is the solution. So my brother and sister, I just say to you in closing, whatever area you're struggling in, whether it's your finances, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your health, whether it's parenting, just know the storms are going to come in your life. Sometimes the storm can be so strong that it seems that you're going to lose everything. But I come to let you to know that God is all powerful. I come to let you know whatever you're going through, just lean into God's arm and he will carry you where you can't see how you're going to move forward because the way is so powerful and so heavy. You can't lift it. You can't sustain yourself. God can and God will. I just want you to know that there's nothing too hard for God. I want you to know there's nothing impossible for God. I want you to know that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that God got it. No matter what it looks like, God got it. I want you to know that when you have no strength, you can still go on because God is our strength. And God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. So when you are too weak, lean on God. He won't let you fail. Wait on God. God will see you through. God is all powerful. God is an ever present help. God is almighty. So whatever is going on, whatever it may be, talk to yourself and say, self behave. Talk to yourself. So I'm going to trust God. Talk to yourself. So I'm not going to move to the right. I'm not going to move to the left. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to go forth. I'm going to stand on God's word. I'm going to believe God's word. I'm going to do what God said. And if you stand on God's word, you can walk in the power and authority of his word. And then God's word will be manifested. God will do what he says he's going to do. God owns his word and all that's in it. The cattle of the Father, his belongs to God. So if you need money, don't you know God can give you money? 
If you need to be healed, don't you know God made your body? He can heal you. If you need to be restored, don't you know God is a restorer? Whatever going on, don't give up. Don't give in. Just know that God is all powerful. So how to keep going when your strength is gone? Go to the Lord. Go to his word. Stand on God's word and trust God.